This week was a graphic reminder of the extreme weather we have in Oklahoma. A cold front moving through the state brought severe storms, freezing rain and hail, and dropped temperatures more than 40 degrees in a few hours. The heat index ahead of the front was in the 80s in the southeast. The wind chill index behind it dropped into single digits in the panhandle. Spring was only a few days old when the state got its first taste of the severe storm season. While severe weather can hit any time, April and May are the prime months for tornadoes, and the yearly warning is going out to make sure you are prepared. Oklahoma is well known as the heart of Tornado Alley, but even for lifelong residents, it is still easy to face severe weather and not be ready for what's coming. Some people seem to be lulled into a false sense of security when it doesn't happen to them for an extended period of time. We've even heard from people that believe that there are certain areas that are protected or immune from tornadoes due to a variety of factors. Rick Smith is the warning coordination meteorologist for the National Weather Service. He says predicting the type of tornado season ahead isn't really possible. We started off slowly so far this year, uh, but what we've learned is it only takes one day to make the tornado season. A prime example, May of 2010. At 3.30 in the afternoon on May 10th, we had three tornadoes for the whole year. By 8.30 that evening, we had 58 tornadoes. While making those predictions is difficult, right now the state is primed for a severe storm season that could include a lot of tornadoes. If we're staying the active pattern that we're seeing recently, it could be a busy year if we just get the, the ingredients to line up just right. Uh, but what we do know without a doubt is there will be tornadoes in Oklahoma this year. Being prepared is the message from the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management, a job that Director Albert Ashwood says falls on every citizen of the state. The main thing we have to do is get the message out there for individuals and local communities that the best way that we can be prepared as a state is for them to be prepared locally so we don't have to come help to make sure that the base is solid. It all works from the bottom up, not from the top down. Ashwood's message is clear. Local and state government will do its job after a tornado strikes, but citizens have to do their job beforehand. Are you prepared at home? Are you going to be a victim or are you going to be someone that's going to take care of yourself and your family? Do you have a plan? Do you have a supply kit, disaster supply kit? Do you have those things that are necessary to take care of you and the ones you love so we don't have to? In addition to having a plan, Ashwood says, every household needs a prepper's kit. The information about what to put in that kit is on the department's website, but he says it's just basic common sense. Flashlight with batteries. Think, uh, think not new technology, but old technology. Again, do you have a radio? Do you have a transistor radio even, an old radio like that? Of course, water, a few uh, snacks that can get you by, but mainly having that plan. And there's another important thing to do, to be really prepared for bad weather. If the city doesn't go ahead and register your shelter, which many of them do these days, at least your neighbors should know to make sure that when, if the disaster does uh, do damage and, and, and there are debris piles, that someone will come looking for you and you can be taken care of. The Office of Emergency Management has the facilities ready to coordinate whatever response is needed with highly specialized communications equipment that works when the systems we all rely on regularly no longer function. Oklahoma has already had its first disaster declaration of the new year, that from February's snowstorms in the northwest. Ashwood says his agency's all-hazard planning is the key to how the state responds to the forces of Mother Nature. So we could cover anything from the severe ice storms, uh, the tornadoes, the floods, the Oklahoma City bombing. Anything that can affect people, citizens of this state, we have to be as prepared as possible for. And we need to be there when disaster does strike to help them uh, get back to life as normal. At the National Weather Service, the goal is to get warnings out early enough for people to respond. Rick Smith says his focus is not on the number of tornadoes the state may face this year, but being ready when they do come. It just takes one, so be ready for that one tornado because it's going to happen, it's just a matter of where. Technology and new science have enabled the Weather Service to warn days in advance when severe weather is expected, but even with that, predicting the severity of the season is just not possible. Tornadoes are caused by thunderstorms and thunderstorms can form we can go from clear blue sky to a, th a thunderstorm producing a tornado in one hour. And so it's just not possible to look out into the future and say how many of those thunderstorms we're going to have. 
Smith says an active spring weather season is good news because the state desperately needs rain because of the drought stricken western half of the state. But he adds that's a dual-edged sword because those spring rains often turn violent. Smith urges people to take advantage of the weather information that is widely available on several platforms, television, radio, internet, and now social media. Social media is enabling us to reach an audience we never could before. So we've, we've increased our Facebook following and people following us on Twitter by the thousands uh, in the last week or so because of the interest in the upcoming severe weather. The Weather Service urges keeping up with the possible severe weather three ways. First, a NOAA weather radio. Second, apps for your smartphone. And third, outdoor warning sirens. Multiple sources are important, even stepping outside to see what's going on. The National Weather Service building is home now to a nucleus of weather research like no place else in the world. From students to experts from around the globe, they're all here to learn and experiment with new ways to predict and understand the weather. All the major advances in severe weather, the Doppler radar was born here in Oklahoma. A lot of the things that we develop and test and invent in this building, this is the breeding ground for that and it spreads throughout the Weather Service.